Hey everyone, Phylaris here. I've been getting a lot of comments asking for advice on how to kite properly, so I decided to make a quick guide. For anyone watching who doesn't know me, I'm just a jungler who really enjoys optimizing clears. You can find a comprehensive spreadsheet of clears I've compiled for each jungler in the description below. Now, in this video, I won't really be going over small tips or tricks for clearing. Instead, I just want to give a conceptual breakdown of jungle kiting itself because I think it's one of the least understood fundamentals of jungling, even though it's remained pretty much unchanged since the game was released. Jungle kiting has two primary focuses, speed and health. You kite the camp toward your next location to save several seconds of walking, and ideally, you avoid taking some damage from the camp in the process. It's a pretty straightforward and reliable facet of jungling to get better at, as it simply never hurts to be a bit faster and healthier. Your rate of experience and gold income will be higher, you'll be able to reach windows of opportunity more quickly, and your success rate in ganks and skirmishes will increase as a result. So let's talk about how you actually kite jungle camps. Monsters, just like champions, have set attack rates, attack ranges, and auto attack animation frames. Once a monster begins its auto attack, it's locked into the animation until the attack completes. Once this animation is over, there will be a brief delay before the monster can attack again, based on its attack speed. You can't kite a monster out while it's already locked into its attack animations, so you're looking to kite in between its attacks. A common mistake beginners make while trying to kite is that they'll try to move back between every single auto attack they do. Oftentimes, the monster won't be able to chase, as it's already locked into an attack animation and this results in not only a failed kite, but also potentially some DPS loss if your next attack is delayed as a result of that failure. I recommend setting your HP to auto-recover in practice tool, and simply letting each camp hit you while you experiment with kite timings. Get familiar with when you can and cannot kite each camp. Now, let's talk about saving health while kiting. This is where most junglers' understanding gets a little vague, Pretty much everyone understands that you're supposed to end up a bit healthier if you kite camps. But why does this actually happen? Things like proper targeting on AoE camps or running circles around the bugs help. But saving health can also happen as a byproduct of the basic kiting motion itself, provided you perform it properly. When you stand still and trade auto attacks with the camp, there is no net DPS loss from either side. You're dealing damage at your maximum rate and so is the camp. When you introduce kiting into the mix, ideally you should still be dealing damage at your maximum rate, as you're kiting back only when your own auto attacks are on delay. However, monsters only chase you between their own auto attacks as well, meaning when you kite normally, you're usually not delaying their auto attacks by very much, because they're essentially just chasing you when they can't hit you anyways. So while you're successfully gaining some distance, you're not really getting hit any less than you normally would. But this doesn't need to be the case. If you time your kites properly, you can heavily delay auto attacks from monsters. If you think about it, if you want to delay a monster's auto attack, that means you need it to be chasing you when its auto attack is actually ready. Functionally, this means you want to break the monster's attack range right before its auto attack is ready. Take a look at the following clips. In the first one, I'm kiting back at regular intervals, but I'm making sure to pull back right after I get hit. This means the monster is chasing me when its auto attack is already on delay, and as such, no damage is being prevented. In the second clip, I'm making sure to pull back right before I get hit. This means the monster is chasing me when its auto attack is ready. You can see a clear difference in the tempo with which I'm getting hit. When you're kiting for health, you're basically looking to orient your attack pattern around this particular timing. Based on your champion's attack speed relative to the camp's attack speed, this tends to result in certain attack trade ratios. This is because each time that you successfully delay a monster's attack while kiting it out, you're essentially starting a new cycle when you walk back in, because you'll be immediately trading autos with the camp. This is where the rules of thumb you typically hear about such as kiting buffs 2 to 1 or 3 to 2 come from. 
you're artificially forcing auto-attack exchanges in set ratios. However, it's important to note that these are just very basic rules of thumb that try to distill this concept into a usable form for beginners. They do not account for varying attack speeds, ranges, or delays between different champions, nor do they account for the different attack speeds and ranges of each camp. But if you understand the core concept of how to delay monster auto-attacks, you can figure out the proper ratio for saving the most health in any scenario. Let's say you naturally attack 50% faster than a camp. So you'd normally be trading auto attacks in a 1.5 to 1 ratio if you were standing still. This means in 6 auto attacks, you'd get hit 4 times in return. But if you're able to force a 2 to 1 trade pattern, this means you'd only get hit 3 times in return. Over the course of an early game clear, you can prevent quite a lot of damage by using the correct kite ratios on each camp. Of course, if your auto attack rate lines up with the monsters unfavorably, you might not save any health at all, no matter what you do. For example, if your champion naturally attacks exactly twice as fast as a camp, 2 to 1 trades will happen even if you're standing completely still, so forcing a 2 to 1 kite ratio won't make any difference. It's important to understand how kite ratios work to figure out when they're applicable and what ratios to use. Now, I want to make it clear that I'm not trying to say that you should always be trying to kite with set ratios. As I outlined earlier, kiting has two purposes, speed and health. While kite ratios reduce the amount of damage you take, they also slow down your kiting, relative to if you simply kited whenever possible. With some levels and items, pretty much all jungle champions reach a point where they clear with pretty much full health. Many champions are very healthy even from their first clear, in these cases, it doesn't make any sense to slow down your kiting with set ratios, and you should just be prioritizing speed. However, for the junglers that struggle a bit with staying healthy in the early game, you're typically not actually sacrificing any speed by kiting in ratios. This is because junglers typically don't do enough damage in the early game to kill camps before they hit their patience range, so you reach the maximum amount of kite distance even if you're prioritizing health. In the end, it's preferable if you just understand kiting as a whole, both kiting for speed by pulling whenever the monsters aren't locked into their attack animations, and kiting for health by identifying the correct kite ratios to use in each situation. That way you can just use whichever kite method is appropriate. That about covers it for this video. I didn't want this to get too long, so I didn't go into anything too technical. If there's interest, I can make another video going into depth about some of the mechanics you can use in actually executing optimal kiting more consistently. This includes topics like micro kiting, S key usage, and patience control. However, these mechanics are only worth learning if you really want to min max your clear, and I don't actually recommend investing the time into learning them otherwise. Just mastering the concepts described in this video is enough to get your kiting to a really solid level. If you are interested in learning more, however, you can subscribe and drop a comment letting me know if there are any specifics you'd like me to cover, and I'll make a follow-up video about these topics. Thanks for listening, and hopefully some of you found this helpful.